Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about the best $550 1080p and 1440p gaming PC build. Alright, so let's kick things off by taking off the side panels of the Deepcool Matrix 55 PC case. Now you don't need to use this exact PC case, and if you decide to use a completely different one, building procedure will pretty much be the exact same as the one I'm demonstrating in this video. Anyway, the first part we want to be installing is the power supply. So grab your power supply and get it unboxed. The included screws in the box are the ones we'll be using to secure the power supply. In the box you'll also find some cable management straps, so that is super awesome. Thank you EVGA for including that. But anyway, once you have your power supply unboxed, place the power supply in the case with the fan facing the vent at the bottom. Now if you're using a different case, 99% of the time the power supply's fan faces the bottom. So even if you're using a different case, this is still how you'll want to do it. Next, go ahead and grab the screws I talked about earlier, the ones that were included in the power supply box, and use them to secure the power supply using the four screw holes. Once that's all done, one by one, route the cables towards the back of the case. By the way, these twisty ties, they're super useful. You'll want to hold on to them because they're extremely helpful when it comes to cable management. I'll go over that later on in the video. But yeah, once you have all the cables routed towards the back of the case, should look something like this. Obviously, it doesn't need to be nice, neat, and orderly. And now you want to grab the power cable. Again, twisty tie, hold on to it, plug it into the power supply, make sure the power supply is switched off, and then plug the cable into the wall. Now that the PC is properly grounded, we can patch our anti-static wristband. The one I'm using is homemade, it works perfectly fine, but I do recommend you grab one from Amazon. I'll have a link to one in the description. But to ensure that the anti-static wristband is working properly, attach the clip to the metal part of the power supply. Now what's the point of this? If you accidentally shock your motherboard with static discharge, you may break your motherboard. The wristband eliminates the static discharge. Not required, but I do highly recommend it. Anyway, moving on, let's get the motherboard ready for installation. So get the motherboard out of its box, make sure you have eliminated static discharge, and take the motherboard out of its anti-static bag. Place it directly on top of the box it came in. First part we'll be installing on the motherboard is the CPU, which is the Ryzen 3100. In the box you'll find, of course, the processor, a nice sticker, some papers, and of course, the CPU cooler. Grab the plastic casing that your 3100 is enclosed in. Very, very carefully open it so it doesn't pop out, jump at you. Don't want any of those pins to get bent and grab it by the sides. There's two little inlets on the plastic casing that show you where exactly you should grab it from. And here's your Ryzen 3100. Again, be very, very careful with this thing. Now locate the triangle, which should be on the bottom left of the CPU and match it up with the indicator on your motherboard. Unlock the socket by doing exactly what I just did there with the lever and very slowly and carefully place the 3100 in its slot. I know this is a very, very scary task for a lot of you, but watch. I don't have the steadiest of hands, but very easy task. And once that is done, lower the lever back into its position to lock the CPU in place. And there you go. It's easy, I promise. Next up, remove the two plastic pieces that surround the CPU so that we can install the CPU cooler. So far so easy, right guys? Now get your CPU cooler, get that thing unboxed, and be careful not to touch the bottom of the cooler since that is where you'll find thermal paste pre-applied. I've made this mistake before, it won't ruin your computer, but obviously I do not recommend that you make that mistake. And as you can see here, like I said, thermal paste pre-applied. You can of course take this off, apply your own thermal paste, but there's nothing wrong with the thermal paste that AMD includes. So the AMD logo should be facing the IO. Now slowly and carefully align it with the CPU cooler screw holes since you want a very even application of the thermal paste and evenly screw this thing in by doing it in an X pattern. So top left, bottom right, top right, 
bottom left. Just keep doing that over and over until it's secured in place. You will not need to use any excessive force to screw it in. Okay, so of course screw with confidence, but not to the point where you're using literally every single muscle in your arm. Now you can plug in the cooler into the header labeled CPU fan. Only goes in one way, so don't be worried that you're putting it in wrong. And next up, the RAM. So to get your motherboard prepared for the installation of RAM, locate these two tabs and push them down to open up the RAM slots. You only need to do this on the right side with this specific motherboard. Now let's get our team T-Force Vulcan Z 2x8, 3200 megahertz RAM, get it all unboxed and prepared for installation on the motherboard. A very nice gray reflective metallic design. I've always been a fan of T-Force. And I of course can't forget mentioning the cute little sticker that's included. The RAM only goes in one way, so Vulcan Z should be facing the side that has the tab that you just pushed down. So use both thumbs to secure it in place. You will hear an audible click when they're properly installed. So make sure you're listening for that clicking noise. Did notice with this specific motherboard, it took a good bit of force to install the RAM. So don't scare yourself by thinking you're using way too much force. And before we get the motherboard into the case, we can't forget the IO shield. This is included in the motherboard box. All you really need to do is evenly apply pressure around the sides to get it locked in place. And now we're ready to put in the motherboard. So go ahead and place the case on its backside. Now to screw the motherboard in place, I'm going to be using my handy dandy screw kit that I got from Sutremember. Link for this will be in the description. You don't need to use this. The case comes with screws. I'm just a bigger fan of using screws that come from a screw kit instead of the case. I just feel that they're more solid and more reliable. But again, the case does come with screws. You do not need to use a screw kit. The easiest way to put the motherboard in the case is to align the IO with the IO shield. And just like that, you're ready to screw in the motherboard. Once your motherboard is screwed into the case, you're ready to install the M.2 SSD, which will be our primary and only storage device that we'll be using in this build. So take your M.2 SSD, put it in its slot, and use the included screw that came with the motherboard, should be in a tiny bag, to secure it in place. And once that's done, we can put the case back right side up so that we can remove the front panel to install the front 120 millimeter fans. Now the fans will come with their own screws to secure them into the case, but again, I will be using the screws that came with my screw kit. Now you don't need to use these exact fans. Any 120 millimeter fans will work. Like, I mean any, as long as they're 120 millimeter, they're gonna work. Now the fans I'm installing right here are not gonna be the ones that I link to you guys in the description. These are just leftover light up fans that I have, but I will be linking much better ones in the description. They're pretty much identical to these. And again, the installation process is the exact same. They fit in the exact same slot because they're 120 millimeters. Same exact procedure for the fan in the back of the case. Use four screws to secure it in place using either the screws from the screw kit or the screws included with the fans. As for the fan cable, what you'll want to do is route it through the top left opening of the case like so. And for the two fans in the front, you can route them through the top opening in the front of the case. And then you can put the front panel back on the case. No reason to have it off anymore. Now, if you've made it this far, this is where it gets super easy. All that's left is the cables and the graphics card. So let's start with the 24 pin cable. Right it through the middle of the case so that we can plug it into the motherboard. As you can see, there's a little notch right here. So you wanna make sure that's in front of the 20 pin connector so that it can go into the motherboard. You will need a good bit of force when installing this thing. Like it, it takes a little bit. It takes at least 30 seconds, especially if you're a novice at this sort of thing but you'll know you did it properly when this notch right here snaps to the motherboard. Next up, let's do the CPU power cable. If you're facing the back side of the case, it should be on the top right corner. Route it through the top and plug it into its proper slot, which should be right here. Just like the 24 pin connector, you'll know it's properly installed when the notch is snapped in place. Now for the tricky connectors, the front panel cables. Now these will come from the front of the case. These don't come from the power supply. Now this is what we're gonna use as our guide to know which pin we connect each cable to. You'll find the front panel headers at the very bottom right corner of the motherboard. So like I said, using a piece of paper as your guide, which by the way, you can also find in the motherboard manual, slowly and carefully insert each cable into its correct position.
Next up, the USB cable. Like the front panel cable, it will be coming from the front of the case, not the power supply. Route it through one of the bottom cutouts and plug it into the USB header. After that, locate the USB 3.0 cable, which looks a good bit different from the USB 2.0 cable. And remember, this will be coming from the front of the case. Plug it into the USB 3.0 header. Only goes in one way, so be sure to match up the notch with the notch on the motherboard. And the last case cable that we'll be connecting to the motherboard is the audio cable. So locate it, comes from the front of the case once again, and this cable connects to the header on the bottom left side of the motherboard labeled HD audio. Now let's connect our fan splitter. This will connect to the header labeled CHA Fan 2, which will be found at the bottom right side of the motherboard. Now the reason we're using a fan splitter is because this motherboard only has two four pin chassis fan headers, which obviously is not enough for this build as we're using three 120 millimeter fans. So now you can connect all of your fans to this fan hub. Also, I do recommend you get a fourth fan if possible, if you just have an extra 120 millimeter fan just lying around and just connect it to this hub and install it on the top fan slot. Now now this is not required, but I do recommend it. Anyway, once you have all your fans connected to the fan hub, this is what it should look like. And now you can take the adhesive tape off of the back of the hub and install it probably towards the middle where all the cables reach. And now for the catchphrase, the part you've probably been waiting to hear about, the graphics card. It comes in a nice little enclosure and an anti-static bag. You can just take it out of its anti-static bag and remove the stickers from the 1650 Super casing and backplate. And of course, don't forget to remove this little rubber piece. Make sure that these two PCI brackets are removed. Otherwise, the graphics card will not be able to be put in its slot. And once all that is done, you are ready to install your graphics card. So push down on this tab right here, make sure it's down and slowly but surely place your graphics card in the PCIe slot. You'll know it's properly installed when this tab right here makes a clicking noise. Also as a side note, if you ever wanna take out your graphics card, you're going to have to push down on that tab, just saying. To secure the graphics card in place, take the screws that you use to remove the PCI brackets and reinstall them in the same exact spot. And now we're on the final step, connecting the six pin power connector to the graphics card. Probably the easiest step, just pull the six pin power connector from the bottom and plug it right on into the graphics card. With this specific power supply, you can pull away the excess cable. And once you've done that, clamp down this spot using a twisty tie or something just to pretty it up a little bit. And congratulations, your PC is ready to be booted. Just make sure you flip the switch on the back of the power supply so that it indicates that it's on. Okay, so now let's move on to the topic of installing Windows and the drivers you'll need for this specific build. So start off by booting up your computer and spamming the BIOS key. For AS Rockboards, it should be the F2 key. Once you do that, you'll be greeted by this screen. Make sure all the information is correct and stable, and then you can click exit, and then click save, changes, and exit, and click yes. Now since you were able to verify that your computer is in perfectly working order, you can now put on the glass panel, do some cable management, and put on the back panel as well. And now for how to install Windows. So the first step is to go onto a separate computer and plug in a USB drive that has a capacity of eight gigabytes or higher so that we can download Windows 10 onto it. Then go on the Windows 10 disk image ISO file download page, which will be in my description and click download tool now. Won't take too long, it's not a very big file drag it onto the desktop and then double click file. It'll take a couple seconds to load as you can tell. Once it does load, accept the software license terms. It'll then take another little bit to load. Then select create installation media and click next. Now ensure that it is the language of your preference. You have Windows 10 selected and the architecture is 64-bit. Then click next. Make sure USB flash drive is selected. Click next. And then ensure it's installing onto your USB drive. Then click next and it'll install it onto the USB flash drive. This will take a little while, so you're going to want to just let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes. So now that Windows 10 has successfully been downloaded onto the USB drive, it is time to plug it into the new PC. 
Now press the boot button and wait until you're greeted by this screen. When you reach this window, ensure the correct language and time format are selected and then click install now. It'll then take a little bit and start setting up the process for the installation of Windows. Then click I don't have a product key. You'll be able to put in this product key later on. Then click Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro and then click Next. It'll then take another couple seconds to load. Then click I accept the license terms and click Next. Now click Install Windows Only and select the drive that you're installing Windows onto. And then let Windows install. This will take around 20 to 30 minutes. So just let your PC sit, go get yourself a nice little snack or something, watch some TV and let Windows download. Now head over to Digital Chill Mart, best place to get a Windows 10 license. I've been working with these guys for a long time, so trust me, this is a trustworthy website to get a really cheap Windows key from. Then you're going to want to get the key for whatever Windows version you downloaded, being Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro, and then click Add to Cart and Check Out. You'll then be emailed the Windows license key after you purchase it. Once you have the activation key, Click the search bar in the bottom left, type in activation, and then click activation settings. Now you should see something that says activate windows right around this area. It should look like this, and that's where you're going to want to type in the key that you received from digitalchillmart.com. As for drivers, every single link to all the drivers you will need for this PC build will be in the description of this video. So be sure to check that out when you complete installation of Windows on this computer so that you can immediately install those drivers. And last, but certainly not least, the benchmarks for this computer. So for this segment of the video, there will be no commentary, just the benchmarks and some nice soothing music. So sit back, relax, and enjoy.
So that will wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub, really helps out the channel. Also, if you've built this or plan on building it, be sure to drop a comment. The community and I would love to hear about it. Thanks for watching. Peace out.